resources uh, finite but unbounded. Whatever are they talking about? Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean absolutely flat. And that we live, appropriately enough, in a flat land. A land designed and named by Edwin Abbott, a Shakespearean scholar who lived in Victorian England. Everybody in Flatland is, of course, exceptionally flat. We have squares, circles, triangles, and we all scurry about, and we can go into our houses and do our flat business. Now, we have width and length, but no height at all. Now, these little cutouts have some little height, but uh, let's ignore that. Let's imagine that these are absolutely flat. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. And the three-dimensional creature sees uh, an attractive, congenial-looking square, watches it enter its house and decides in a gesture of interdimensional amity to say hello. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his insides, a voice from within. He surely is getting a little worried about his sanity. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration, and so he descends to actually enter Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in Flatland only partially, only a plane, a cross-section through him can be seen. So. When the three-dimensional creature first reaches flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen. And we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in flatland. And as the apple were to descend through, slither by flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices, which we can represent by the apple. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion and so not such a friendly gesture from dimension to dimension, makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above flatland. At first, the square has no idea of what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. But after a while, he comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Getting into another dimension provides as an incidental benefit a kind of x-ray vision. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was in some other mystic dimension called up. And they will pat him on his side and comfort him, or else they'll ask, well, show us. Where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it and the poor square will be unable to comply. But maybe more interesting is the other direction in dimensionality. What about the fourth dimension? Now, to approach that, let's consider a cube. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment 
and move it at right angles to itself in equal length. That makes a square. Move that square in equal length at right angles to itself, and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow, we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Now, let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it, carry it, through a fourth physical dimension. Not that way. Not that way. Not that way. But at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is, but imagine that there is a fourth physical dimension. In that case, we would generate a four-dimensional hypercube, which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And you can see it's two nested cubes, all the vertices connected by lines. And now the real tesseract in four dimensions would have all the lines of equal length and all the angles right angles. That's not what we see here, but that's the penalty of projection. So you see, while we cannot imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. Now, imagine a universe just like Flatland, truly two-dimensional, and entirely flat in every direction, but with one exception. Unbeknownst to the inhabitants, their two-dimensional universe is curved into a third physical dimension, maybe into a sphere, but at any rate, into something entirely outside their experience. Locally, their universe still looks flat enough, but if one of them, much smaller and flatter than me, takes a very long walk along what seems to be a straight line, he would uncover a great mystery. Suppose he marked his starting point here and set off to explore his universe. He never turns around and he never reaches an edge. He doesn't know that his apparently flat universe is actually curved into an enormous sphere. He doesn't sense that he's walking around a globe. Why should his space be curved? Because there's so much matter in this universe that it gravitationally warps space, closing it back on itself into a sphere. But our flatlander doesn't know this. After a long while, you'll find he somehow returns to his starting point. There must be a third dimension. Our flatlander couldn't imagine a third dimension, but he could sure deduce it. Now, increase all the dimensions in this story by one, and you have something like the situation which many cosmologists think may actually apply to us. We are three-dimensional creatures trapped in three dimensions. We imagine our universe to be flat in three dimensions, but maybe it's curved into a fourth. We can talk about a fourth physical dimension, but we can't experience it. No one can point to the fourth dimension. I mean, there's left, right, and there's forward, back, there's up, down, and uh, there's uh, some other direction simultaneously at right angles to those familiar three dimensions. Reverse vacuum energy. Dark energy is the name given to the mysterious force that is accelerating the rate at which our universe is expanding. We have known that our universe is expanding, that is, galaxies and clusters of galaxies are moving away from each other, since the observations of Edwin Hubble in the 1920s. It was thought that the rate of expansion would slow down over time as gravity gradually exerted a braking effect. However, about 20 years ago it was surprisingly discovered that not only is expansion not slowing down, it is actually speeding up. 
some repulsive force is pulling the universe apart and this force was dubbed dark energy. Unlike mass, energy can produce an attractive or repulsive gravity depending on whether the energy pressure is positive or negative. The vacuum energy in theory has negative energy pressures, the problem with modern gravity theory is gravity in space can be viewed as a physical action created by a physical thing called the expanding void. An imagery of a round sphere embedded at the central mass of an expanding matter universe that is expanding into an idle space condition. Known in the quanta physics theory, space expansion is dubbed from an expanded universe theory illustrated by Erwin Hubble's research show an expansing universe entailed in their parts. 1. Idle space. The condition of a reactive material or element that allows interaction of primeval forces. 2. The material universe. That part of the universe all made up of all matter existing throughout project universe. 3. An expanding void. A physics-all deity evolving mid-center the universe causing it to grow or expand. Setting aside the factual basis of this expanding bubble as it has been called the viat is reverse vacuum compression of the fifth element. A mouse the five primeval five elements it is space in a concentrated form caused by the explosion known to us as the big BQNG event. Its cause is the affect of an empty vacuum effect suppressed by reverse engineering formed in the aftermath of creation. This idea is equivalent to the cosmological constant used by Albert Einstein in his equations of general relativity and represents a constant energy density throughout space it is his neutrality of the C constant that was found to be invalid by the later Hubble exchange. The idea of virtual particles per SE in vacuum could also show the alignment of unknown territory in physics. Repulsive gravity. In the theory of general relativity, we usually assume that the energy is greater than zero, at all times and everywhere in the universe, says Professor Daniel Grumila from the Institute for Theoretical Physics at the Tuvine, Vienna. This has a very important consequence for gravity, energy is linked to mass via the formula E equals mc superscript 2. Negative energy would therefore also mean negative mass. Positive masses attract each other, but with a negative mass, gravity could suddenly become a repulsive force. Even if the matter is somewhat more complicated than previously thought, energy cannot be obtained from nothing, even though it can become negative. The new research results now place tight bounds on negativity, thereby connecting it with quintessential properties of quantum mechanics. If I went to space and had an empty box slash container and went outside to fill that box with space, what would be inside the box? One. Outer space, the void that exists between planets and stars, is not completely empty. Stars, planets, and moons keep their atmospheres by gravitational attraction. The density of atmospheric gas decreases with distance from the Earth but there is no fine line where Earth's atmosphere ends and outer space begins, Wikipedia link. If you take a box as far as possible from the influence of heavenly bodies and nebulae, you can theoretically say you are in outer space but outer space will still contain a low density of atomic particles, predominantly a plasma of hydrogen and helium, neutrinos, and dusts, as well as electromagnetic radiation, magnetic fields, and cosmic rays. 2. Vacuum is space devoid of matter. It would be nice if we could say that a vacuum is space devoid of matter and energy but quantum field theory tells us we can't. There is always background energy called vacuum energy in a vacuum. The effects of vacuum energy have been experimentally observed in phenomena such as the Casimir effect and the Lamb shift, and vacuum energy is believed to influence the behavior of the universe on cosmological scales, Wikipedia link. Therefore, a vacuum is not empty space. It is the ground state of space with the energy of the ground state called zero-point energy or what's in quanta physics is called idle space. The latter does not mean zero energy per SE but the minimum energy below which a thermodynamic system can never go. The source of vacuum energy are virtual particles or particle pairs that pop into existence and then disappear immediately such that they can't be directly observed. For now. The only way physicists can analyze virtual particles is through mathematical abstraction. Whether they have concrete physical existence is controversial. If you intend to fill a box with vacuum, you can only do this in theory. 
The vacuum inside the box, not the box, will have virtual particles and zero point energy only but it also can contain a physical effect or reaction of unknown elements at the third quantum. Reverse vacuum energy in theory has neither positive or negative energies. The problem with modern gravity theory is gravity in space is repul, sieve and can be viewed as a physical action created by a physical thing called the expanding primeval egg. An imagery of a round sphere embedded at the central of mass of an expanding matter universe that is expanding into an unknown yet idle condition of pen space. In the case of our universe this idle space action is an affect made by the Big Bang event itself. The reverse false vacuum created by the Big Bang expansion in an idle space condition that when evolves into inflation it discovers a vacuum hole at the center of creation has been formed. The Big Bang has done what it did with forming matter it did also with empty space. It created a reversed vacuum of concentrated space. The condition that illustrates why the universe is physically expanding by a physically embedded and concentrated force. The Cosmic Core Planets, Stars, and Galaxies As the universe gets bigger, the galaxies grow smaller. English Rodney Kawecki 2020 the Cosmic Core It is my hope that in reading this book you will comprehend factors in the novel that explain the product of a new gravity theory. It's meaningless to keep believing the assumption when that assumption has been shown to be wrong with no shadow to the doubt. As it stands today, the theory of gravitation has been unmeasured and assumed to be an attraction force, abide basically by assumption of the illustrators and editors of its history. Really no theorists whom evolved in the scientific community has physically been shown that the gravity force has been defined positively as an attraction force but the historic direction of all that research seems to point to that. The positive and negative virtues from Galileo, Isaac Newton to Albert Einstein illustrate shortcomings when it comes to admitting it. In Newton's era it was a train of thought that secrets in the information were disguised in its diagrams and mathematics so to keep secret the true nature of the illustrator's knowledge. Isaac Newton was one of these scientists. The public universities and colleges teach the gravity force as an attraction force. It's possible that the information was not available at the time of the research or the researcher was looking for something else when he wrote it. But evidence that is directly defined by the scientific evidence whether here or now postdates the positive labeling in a theory. The fact that similar masses or stuff repels is a direct evidence to the contrary evidence in the historical claims that says it was not it is the truth and magnitude in the definition that the arbitrary gravity force theory stands. Table of Content Chapter 1 The Logic About Time Chapter 2 Repulsive Gravity Theory Chapter 3 The Repulse Expanse Theory Chapter 4 Can Gravity Be Reversed? Chapter 5 Does the Universe Have Mass? Chapter 6 Can We Reverse Gravity? Intro What Unexplained Phenomena Exits? At the Center of the Universe What Unexplained Phenomena Exists at the Center of the Universe and Why? The question about the universe's center has puzzled most physicists and scientists around the world for many a decade. It was in 1905 when the first physicists tried to answer this question. That physicist was Albert Einstein. He put a tap on the universe that lasted for over a hundred years. His claim was that the universe was flat that its center was an accumulation of space-time that if a ship were to travel in a straight enough direction he would end up in the same place they started from. This idea was startling because for this travel coordinates to happen the universe would have to be round. With this idea it was discovered in 1923 by the observations of Edwin Hubble that he discovered that the universe was expanding. The galaxies were traveling away from one another and at a velocity that measured faster than light. In Einstein's view this was impossible. The idea that one could travel in straight line at a starting point somewhere in space and end up in the same place after the journey seemed impossible as well with a flat universe theory. But Hubble's observation also opened the doorway to not only universe expansion but a round universe. Space was never a dictum in Hubble's view though. It seemed to him if the galaxies were spreading apart from one another what some believed as the runaway universe was just that a runaway universe. 
his final discovery was that the universe that's anything observed and seen as planetary matter exists with the action of an expanding balloon of expanding bubble underneath it an invisible universe with the shape of a balloon as he called it. So, what would one say about a round expanding universe a source deemed to be the foundation of the universe and surface claimed to be its gravity force itself an invisible universe with the shape of a balloon as an invisible source of gravitation that due to a zero point energy element surrounding it is a gravity force without energy. Like Earth's gravity force it takes an attraction force of energy to form a gravitation environment. With that this balloon type bubble universe retain s zero energy but it does retain a force. An expansion force so great it causes the galaxies to remain steady state clinging to its surface. Space of course exists as a vacuum. It retains no energy except from that that exists in the suns and planetary bodies that exist in it. The invisible force of gravitation in space emptiness except for a pushing force that acts as a carrier force for galactic bodies throughout the realm a force that increases acceleration of momentum of anything that gains speed in its field a speed that increases and excels the instruments of velocity far beyond the normal measurements. Like Earth's gravity force an automobile accelerated to 50 miles per hour, it takes 100 miles per hour energy propulsion to achieve. In space we have the same measurements except that the push force accelerates the normal propulsion force to exceed to twice the acceleration instantaneously. A ship traveling through space at 50,000 miles an hour travels 99.9999% that acceleration plus another 50,000 miles an hour due to push force. This new theory in modern physics opens a unique doorway about the theoretic in physics that have yet been known till now. Under the new label the quanta physics theory it's been a long 20 year study stemming from the ideas shown in relativity both SRT and GRT. The imaginary journey of special relativity and the equation E equals MC superscript 2. Rodney Kawecki's claim that E equals MC superscript 2 may be essential when talking about matter but in space the equation does not do well. The space field has special characteristics that were never observed in 1905 or 1915 and only come into view at the time of Erwin Hubble's discoveries. Though Hubble's universe only advances physics to an expanding universe Rodney Kawecki has ventured beyond the idea of a round universe with new equations that rebuild the universe in a three-dimensional model. His work in modern physics has ventured since 1997 when he published his first book The Supertelic Electromagnetic Gravitational Universe Technology Theory short for SEGUT because of this a ship traveling in a straight line our ship returns to its place of origin as can be easily viewed. But other changes occur also. The age of the universe, the length of it as well as how fast a ship might travel in a zero-point energy space field push force gravitation field. Specific rights lead modern physics to a foundation that is unknown today by modern science with the observations made by earlier scientific predictions that seem over the years have lead us to believe the likewise of them if this is true then we stand at the threshold to regain a further well of knowledge that has filled those mishaps. Rodney Kawecki is a modern writer of five new books about the invisible forces that lay dormant throughout the universe only to be generated by a close call of external interference. Written under the name The Quanta Physics Theory Rodney Kawecki believes he owes it to science that his observations in his books come to an end that only can be viewed as unique and remarkable. That in its aftermath he believes they might open a doorway to vast speed limit beyond measurable links between light speed and velocities that can be achieved with a greater understanding about our universe though the bits and pieces written by physics authors are only small stories about a factual universe beyond that we believe to be a perfect science.